interesting points in the rise of Poland, but uh, there's lots of other interesting things to get from Finland. So, introduce Harry. Harry Leto. Leto? Why the technical details are getting into order, I'll just say, as you probably all noticed, then Orge is recording all the speakers. So if you cannot be here to hear the talks, you can view them online, and eventually they will all be on the net. So the ones you want to see again, you can see. And the speakers will have a wonderful opportunity of seeing their own talk. If they can <laughs> you, should, you should give that warning at the very end. <laughs> You're on great, thanks. Right. Uh, Harry will, is, is, you're, you're the Finnish representative on, 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 on the email. Uh, on, uh, so, so, uh, and also I'm fine. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll come back to that. Yes, please. Okay, so, so I'm, I'm going to give a somewhat scientific, lighter talk, but it's going to be about teaching astrobiology. And, and one of the points I'm going to make here is the interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary nature of astrobiology. It's quite a difficult thing. Okay, we've done some teaching in Finland and, and held university courses and, and also done some scientific networking, so, so we'll go into that. Astrobiology. So we all know it involves astronomy and astrophysics and biology. These two all fields of science may be the two oldest ones. And between those two there's a big gap, and that's where life formed. <laughs> and that's chemistry. Well, some people argue that it's all biology. Biology also breaks into many different parts. So there's just listed a few parts that are relevant for astrobiology. See here we have already three fields of science that are kind of classical fields of science. You can go on and play the game. Start of life, one we just heard about astrochemistry. Chemistry also can be broken into non-organic, organic and biochemistry. So the start of life is somewhere, somewhere around here, maybe. Things are getting complicated if you're thinking that you should teach this whole stuff yourself. And you can keep on playing the game and not dropping all the, all the subfields of biology and chemistry and, and other fields, you can come up with a list of, of some important fields of science that are involved in, in astrobiology. I mean, we've heard other fields already here, like glaciology and some other ones that are not in this list because I had never heard about them before. But these are at least the areas that I feel are all relevant for astrobiology. You could also take any big university, list the departments of natural sciences, <laughs> and you get the same list. And that's where the, where the problem comes. When you want to teach astrobiology, you want to start from the stars, you want to go into life, and you want to go through all the different steps. If you're teaching just by yourself and you're an astronomer, you're going to end up being biased into teaching astronomy, astrobiology, because you don't really know that much about all these other fields. If you're a biologist teaching this, then your astronomy part is going to be a little bit more lightweight. So that's really a challenge for a scientist to teach this. One solution for this could be, that, okay, there's like seven, seven major groups here. We'll pick one astronomer who's going to talk two, three hours, one geologist, meteorologist, chemist, and these other fields also teaching for a few hours, but it can be a good thing, but there's a problem, and the problem is that all these fields are intertwined in astrobiology. It can be difficult to tell in which order these should be taught in a course because they all involve each other in astrobiology. So one, one option for teaching astrobiology is, is really taking teachers from all, all of these different fields of science and then you have ex their own expertise. But is that going to be astrobiology? That's, that's quite difficult. Difficult to tell. What we did in, in Turku two years ago was that we, we came up with an idea of teaching astrobiology. We went to Frascati and let 
first piano workshop. There were three of us, and then we also asked one, one additional person to come and teach. So we were two biologists and two astronomers teaching the basic course of astrobiology. So from this fields of science, we basically, the biologists taught biology and chemistry, some paleontology, and then astronomers taught these parts and also some of these parts. So there was kind of a natural break and we ended up teaching 13 times 2 hours and each 2 hour session was half kind of astronomy or physics or geology oriented and half biology oriented. And it seemed to, seemed to be a kind of a reasonable compromise. So we had, we had about 250 students and now last fall we did the same, same thing and again had one of the largest classes in our, in our university. We followed up these courses with, with a seminar course which was basically following the book of, of Hornick and somebody else called Astrobiology. It was published in 2001 and it was about 20 different topics in astrobiology and it was, it was pretty, pretty nice for that kind of course. It was more advanced. And we're going to do that again uh, this fall. But due to the nature of the course, we had to limit the number of students to about 26, 30. Okay, in Helsinki we're starting a course this, this coming spring and I'm going to try to teach a home, home course myself with the experience I've had from, from Turku and also my, my wife who's a biologist. So we're an astrobiologist family. <laughs> uh, and then we've had Okay, these are, these are mainly aimed for university students. Then we've had two astrobiology meetings in Finland. First one was held in, in uh, Turku, and the second one was in Helsinki, that was actually 2002. So these were only a month apart. And they had a pretty good number of, of scientists and, and also other participating people, other professors from the university and other other students and so that, that was kind of mainly aimed at people who don't know that they are already already doing astrobiology and they are doing it really wholeheartedly. So mo most of the talks in, in this Turku meeting started that I'm not really an astrobiologist but I study say external fields. Ah you're an astrobiologist <laughs> or I study something else. So, so these, these turned out to be astrobiologists and, and most of the people in this group also. And now we have already people, people doing uh, master's thesis in astrobiology and today we've heard already here people doing their PhDs in astrobiology. Also one of the important things for astrobiology I think is publicity. And that's one of the things we're, we're doing with this bunch of scientists writing writing articles into newspapers and magazines, doing small radio surveys and, and going on TV as often as we can. With Mars it's, it's a little bit easier right now. Okay, so that all kind of sounds nice and easy, but okay, let's come to that research in a while. But there's also, also one big trouble here, and that is maybe due to the same, same reason why teaching astrobiology is quite difficult. And that is that, that the field really covers all natural sciences. And for a, you should be able to teach the biology part, or the physics part, or the ge geology part, so that the person who is majoring in that field doesn't get bored, and the person who hasn't studied that field at all, who understands something about it. And that's, that's a real challenge because you have these many, many areas here. You may have even, say, Finnish majors studying this and people from the medical school. So, so that's, that's one problem. And it seems like, like the biology and the chemistry part are the most difficult parts, <coughs> particularly for people who are doing exact natural sciences, meaning, meaning physics or mathematics. Because biology by nature is a little bit wishy-washy. 
<laughs> I mean, as commonly and in physics, if you have clear rules that you can obey, clear equations, in biology, you can handwave your way through. I mean, sure, I mean, sure there are real things happening, but they're difficult to characterize in numbers or, or in formulas. Then research. There's, this is partially from, from the talks that were given in Turku and Helsinki, and most of the work that's done in astrobiology is done in, in Turku, Helsinki, and, and Tampere. You can see that it, it covers covers basically the the field. So, so in, in Turku and, and Helsinki observatories were doing stability of planetary systems and micro transfer. The first PhD on that topic, and then uh, in Turku, Ola Hegman is, is studying the young Earth. Tampere is a group on external fields. This is by no means a complete list. There are other people also doing this. RNA worms is studied, studied in Turku by Harlinger and Meitner uh, in chemistry and, and my wife, Pierce in biology, and then uh, Marcus in studied by Yaman, who's, who's here to fact history, for example, by by Carletti in geology community. So you can see that there's there's some some work done in the field. One, one of the problems for the scientists doing astrobiology is to convince the university officials that this is really an important area for study. I and mean, the word astrobiology is kind of it's a difficult area because it covers the whole, whole field, so it's not really it doesn't warrant its own partners or anything like that. And getting money for that is also a little bit tricky. You have to know how to pull the right strings and we're still looking for the right strings. Okay. In Turku, we decided to establish a Finnish network for acid biology and the nickname will not be fine. There's about four persons in, in on the mailing list. This is basically the mailing list where we announce news and also a list for contacts so we can get in touch with each other. There's about 40 persons and about about half of them are students. So there's lots of interest from the students in, in this field. And plus I became a member of ANA in, in November 2003, just months ago. And now you have been distributed already Previously, these sheets of Ghana, Sweden, and Denmark are members of it, but Norway is still missing. Iceland is also missing, and that's, that should be pretty much a list of the member countries. Also, you can you can join into Ghana as, as an individual member. I think the yearly view was 15, 15 euros, and Ghana is is part of the. Another ISC which has nothing to do with the ISC in the Canary Islands, the International Astrobiology Circle. Well, which has changed name now, the Federation of Astrobiology Organizations, FAO. FAO. <laughs> <laughs> Some bigger. Yes. <laughs> okay, it includes US, Australia, Canada, and also, also separately several institutions that are, are working in Canada, like the British and uh, Austrian and French and, and Swan. Spanish group. So that's that's quite a nice nice thing and for Eana, Eana is, is to uh, bring public awareness and also, also collaboration between these different astrobiology <coughs> groups. Okay. That's yeah. it. Thank you. I was wondering we can have a discussion now. I wonder if we can include questions about teaching in, in that discussion as part of that session show. That's the, the second marathon talk. On which side? Uh, left side.